all material respects to the respective financial position of the governmental activities, the business type activities, each major fund, and the aggregate remaining fund information of either city for the year ended June 30th, 2020. We applied certain limited procedures to the management discussion and analysis and schedules for budget to actuals by fund for the general fund and each major special revenue fund and schedules related to pensions and other post employment benefits, which are required supplemental information that supplements the basic financial statements. Our procedures consisted of inquiries and management regarding the methods of preparing the information and comparing the information for consistency with management's responses to our inquiries, the basic financial statements, and other knowledge we obtained during our audit of the basic financial statements. Uh, we did not audit the required supplementary information and do not express an opinion or provide any assurance of the RSI or required supplementary information. We are engaged to report on various schedules for budget actuals by fund, which accompany the financial statements but are not RSI. With respect to the, supplement, to the supplementary information, we made certain inquiries of management and evaluated the form, content, and methods of preparing the information to determine that the information complies with the accounting principles generally accepted in the United States of America. The method of preparing it has not changed from the prior period, and the information is appropriate and complete in relation to our audit of the financial statements. We compared and reconciled the supplementary information to the underlying accounting records used to prepare the financial statements or the financial statements themselves. The information is intended solely for the use of Ely City Council and the management of Ely City and is not intended to be and should not be used for any other uh, purposes um, or other than these parties. Sorry. Um, it, an audit of finance statements includes consideration of internal control or financial reporting as a basis for designating audit, audit procedures that are appropriate in the circumstances, but not for the purposes of expressing an opinion on the effectiveness of the entity's internal control or financial reporting. Uh, there is a, also an internal control report on page 87 of uh, the audit. Um, also express that we do not express an opinion. Um, in regards to state compliance, we tested certain areas of the state, state compliance as detailed in our report on page 89 in accordance with NRS 354.624. This report describes the scope of our testing and is not for the purpose of expressing an opinion on the city's compliance with the state requirements. And as you may have noted, um, and it probably has been discussed before, there was a binding. Um, and it sounds like they guys have addressed it in regards to the uh, trust fund. Um, oh, okay. Um, so kind of a brief summary to that. The, uh, the landfill trust requires a state or federal appointed trustee. And I guess I kind of spoke through um, that the trustee was one of the members of the city rather than um, a member of the state or federal. So I think you guys address that by changing that to a bank. Um, all right. Well, uh, have we addressed that? Is that just being? We will. I talked to Shane about it today. So basically, it was my understanding that the bank was in charge of it, and that I was just uh, was the person that was going to be in charge of it. And that I was just the person that could tell the bank when the uh, requirements were met. But that's not how it reads on the trust agreement that we got written of it reads that I'm the trustee and I can't be the trustee. So we just, um, I thought to Shane, I will have him look at it and get it rewritten so it, it specifically states the base of trustee, not myself. So. Okay. Um, let's see. Matters to be communicated. The other issues about the quality of aspects of the entity's significant accounting practices, including accounting policies, County estimates and financial statement disclosures. Um, the significant county policies and management estimates used by Ely City are described in no wanted financial statements. The city has a reliable accounting system that produces reliable financial information. Uh, the city has sound county policies that have not changed during the fiscal year. The financial statement disclosures are neutral, consistent, and clear. Um, in regards to uh, difficulties in county 
who performed the audit of the number nine. Um, in fact, it was actually the best audit we've had in years. Um, everything went smooth. Uh, it was quite a pleasant audit, and we we're excited to be here. So, you know, thank you for what you guys have done. Um, let's see, the statement's only been uh, those the audit reviews are true, if any. Um, implications. Um, I think everything was addressed throughout the audit. Uh, we had no disagreements with management. Um, let's see, we have requested certain representations for management that are included in the management representation letter dated 11 30 2020. Um, and there was no additional consultations with uh, management. Um, See, and beyond that, um, there, let's see, as part of the audit, we evaluated internal controls, policies, and procedures of the city. We reviewed your cash disbursement, disbursement system, uh, money going out, reviewed your cash receipt system, money coming in, reviewed your payroll area, um, performed tests on your financial related numbers, uh, did a test on your journal entries, um, and these internal controls are to keep uh, honest people honest, protect your employees, and detect problems. Um, in regards to fraud, we take our fair fraud procedures very serious. Um, we analyze the risk of fraud in the city. We audit your journal entries, ask fraud questions, and uh, perform additional analysis. Um, and in, for test compliance, uh, we referenced local laws, state laws uh, as required by NRS, NRS 354.64 and federal laws in regards to payroll, EPA, um, ADA, and quite a few other areas. So we were quite thorough. So that is it for my presentation. Um, in regards to the audit itself, if there's any questions uh, near Mr. Bailey, I'm more than happy to answer. Um, Questions at this time? Any questions for the CPA? I don't have no questions, but <laughs> nobody can make a call. I think as for the council, if you would turn to page seven and eight, the comments that are made in there dealing with the, the general fund increased our, our fund balance, you know, about 426,000, some of them are 232,000 of legislative relations. But Looking at that, that is way better than the previous year. And we really increased that. It goes down to each one of them. The, the street fund was in a deficit of 15,000, came out to 28,000 to the good. It goes all the way through all of our enterprise funds. And what I see that as a, as a reflection of, I've said it all along when I even ran, your employees will make you or break you. I see, I think what we see here is in my opinion, our employees trust management. They know we're going to protect them. When the treasurer says we got to uh, make cuts because of COVID, nobody likes cuts. They did it. They, were, they got the money. We got back in the flow of things. But I think our employees trust the management team we have going. They, they trust our staff. And I just think this whole budget is, is a reflection of the, the report, is a, is a reflection of good employees we have here. That's on those pages there, and I've got another comment once I find it. It's toward the end. You know, that closure, post closure, that's my financial thing. I don't know. The technicality there is the way it is there. And uh, let me find it. I have left part of the Oh, and I just need an explanation on this. We could on page 91. That's the schedule of fees and post service provision for the limitation on fees for business licenses. Can I get an explanation? I'm not going to say what I think it is because I might be wrong from what it was in my past experience here. What does that page illustrate or tell us? Sorry, man. Yeah, sure. So as 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 I'm the manager with Kenny Christensen. Um, 
That code section at the top, that 354-5989, requires the auditor to supply this information for inclusion in the financials. Um, and it's, and, you know, we just look at the population change from the internet and the CPI, and that's kind of how we arrive at that limit. Does, does that answer your question? Okay, so, you know, they're talking business license revenue adjusted. Uh -huh. Does this say, we're, I'm not saying we're going to do this, or maybe I'm all wet about this. Does this say we should have a higher business license revenue? Or it, it says the over under allowable, over under? Yeah, you're under. It, it says that, that's basically all I'm saying, is you're under the uh, maximum allowable amount. Okay. Based on the, based on this calculation of, which I think, tries to isolate changes within the city. Okay. Um, so I don't, I don't, it, it doesn't seem to me like it's saying this is what you should be doing and saying you're not exceeding this maximum. Okay, so in retrospect, I know it's probably been 15 years ago, we used this page to help us illustrate we needed to increase business licenses, you know, that we'd be allowed to do that. I'm not saying we're doing that, but this one here says we're getting along fine, even though we, we could ask for more. Yeah, that's what yeah. Okay, well, why is that required by that kind of rest? I don't know. Okay, good answer. I, <laughs> <laughs> I don't need more more than that. Thank you very much. Okay, any other questions for the CPA? There are none, I will entertain a motion to accept the audit. Do I have a second? Okay, second. All right. Make <laughs> that motion. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? All right. All right. Any of them? Very good. Uh, thank you very much. With that, we'll move back to item seven for the public hearing. The mayor will recess the regular city council meeting for a public hearing at 5 30 p.m. <laughs> on the following topics. <laughs> item one Councilwoman Beecher, City Fire Chief Stork. Discussion. Uh, discussion only, approval of resolution 2020-12, a resolution amending the emergency medical services EMS billing rate schedule. Uh, this is public this, this is a public hearing, so we'll have uh, comments from anybody. Second. Yeah. Further discussion. 
Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? There is so ordered. Uh, we move back to new business. We're on item B2, Mayor Robertson, White Pine County Public Health Officer, Darren Coon. Farm day discussion only. Presentation on current COVID-19 pandemic status in the city of Ealing. We have Dr. Coon's here the rest of the time. Thank you for having me. I apologize about my appearance. I got all excited. I ran home, changed my clothes, only to get called back to the hospital and didn't make it home before I could change back into my clothes to come here. So I apologize about the jeans and t-shirt. That was not my intent. I wanted to show you more respect as a, as a city council than that. Um, thank you for this opportunity um, to speak with you tonight. I appreciate everything the city has done for this pandemic that we're currently in. Uh, the mayor has been faithful on the radio and his office and um, the rest of, of uh, this uh, board, uh, our city council has been instrumental in helping uh, curb the pandemic and show your support and doing the right thing. So I do appreciate that. Currently, uh, for those that you might not know, we have um, roughly 305 positive cases of COVID-19 starting from roughly March 20, I want to say 23rd or 27th, somewhere right in there up until today. That's 305 cases that we can directly trace to citizens of White Pine County. That does not uh, include any repeat tests. That does not include anyone that lives outside of our county. So 305 people in our county. Um, currently we have 42 active cases differentiation between active and um, positive. Active cases are those that we are currently um, expecting to be in quarantine, and that includes their whole household, kids, family members, whoever lives in that house, we're asking to quarantine. Um, that changes roughly on a rolling 10-day average, and so every, every day people come on the list and people fall off the list. Uh, we currently have um, two people in the hospital as of today. We have four, put that in perspective, we have four, four COVID-19 beds, so we're at 50% capacity. The hospital does hold more than four people, of course, so we have 25 um, beds, but we've designated a certain area in the hospital where we will treat COVID-19 patients. Um, it is becoming harder and harder to place these patients as we go, um, or not, not necessarily just COVID patients, but to get anyone outside of Ely to accept our patients. So if you have a heart attack, it's harder to get you placed. If you have a GI bleed, or you need services we don't have in Ely, it is getting um, immensely hard to get these people um, placed. Uh, recently, we, um, let's see, today's Thursday, Tuesday, speaking with our head of our ER group, Dr. David Barnett, um, he stated that he spent about six hours trying to get a patient on a flight and find a bed that would accept and be willing to take care of this patient outside of Ely. Um, it's usually not that bad, but with this crisis, that's kind of where we're at. We currently have three deaths in our county. Um, I think that's three too many. These are good members of our community who will be so sorely missed and made a difference for each of us in the county and especially those who love them and, and were with them. Um, as far as um, vaccine, I get a lot of questions on the vaccine. Um, the hospital will receive 140 doses of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine roughly on December 16th, 17th, somewhere in there. We've been told we'll get 140 doses. That vaccine was just approved just, oh, probably been three hours now, by our uh, Food and Drug Administration in D.C. I listened to that hearing today, and it was kind of fun to hear experts and their opinions on the vaccine. Um, the vaccine, I've read the literature, about 60 pages. Um, it appears that in all aspects to be safe. It's faster than anything we've ever produced, so I understand people's gut reactions are nervous, but it's, it's been good. Um, I'm, 
happy to report that um, we are getting that and uh, we're looking forward to, to start that process. I would be happy to entertain questions, Mayor Robertson, or any from any of the council members that you might have or rumors you want dispelled or uh, clarifications. I do have a couple of Go questions. Go for it. That 305 positive and 42 active, do those include the prison? Those do not include the prison. No. Okay. So over Thanksgiving break, I was informed that we had 95 cases come out of the prison. Um, I have a spreadsheet with the names and I talked with the warden, he denied it. However, let's put this in perspective, I didn't realize he was the warden over multiple facilities and these happened to be prisoners from Lincoln County. Okay. I found that information out just yesterday. So the state had misinterpreted, I guess, who the prisoners were. So those are only our citizens, not, not prisoners. Okay, and then also, uh, we have two hospitalized right now. Um, I had heard someone speaking that had just had a baby or something, but she had also tested positive, and she was being counted as being hospitalized, but she had had a baby, that's why she was hospitalized, but is she counted as positive, and this is all hypothetical, I don't know this person, nor do I know her name, um, but is she counted as COVID because she has to be isolated? Is that the case? If, if uh, I cannot, <laughs> HIPAA sure. is a scary thing. Let's just say if it was anybody else and she was in our facility and was COVID positive at the time, she'd be counted as somebody in the hospital with COVID. Because she has to be in the Correct. Okay. Okay, that's what that's just due to the isolation. I, 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 I saw that on Facebook as well, and I just I thought, what do you want us to do? We're trying the best we can. Sure. Yeah, I, I understand so. that, and I, I appreciate your hard work, and thank you so much. And uh, okay. I also appreciate your shirt. That's great. Oh, yeah, Very well, sorry. <laughs> Again, sorry. I'd rather be in a shirt and tie. Here we are. Other questions? Yes, I have a question. <clears throat> Out of the uh, amount of uh, Shots that you will have for <clears throat> for the virus and whatnot. Do you have a breakdown on how you're going to use them within the county? Yes, certainly. So from the federal government, we are uh, dictated or regulated on who gets those first 140 shots. Those that those first in line will be hospital personnel who are on the front lines fighting the virus. If we have any left over, which I don't anticipate much being left over, they will then go to the EMTs, firefighters, um, people of this nature that are also putting themselves in harm's way as they interact with the public. And so that's that's the first step is we'll, we'll take care of what they call the essential employees or the essential health care employees, and then we'll, we'll start to deviate down. I don't anticipate a shot for the general public till probably April or May, but I could be proven wrong. So, well, uh, reading in the Las Vegas, Las Vegas paper the other day, the breakdown is they show that even though if you're a senior citizen and can do that, prisoners in the prison follow right after our emergency. Uh, people and whatnot are first responders in their field. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, do you rate the prisons more valuable than the public who work here or whatnot? I, I don't really understand how they come up with that. I, I don't know how that was determined, but in my um, understanding at this time, it goes healthcare workers, firefighters, EMTs, um, White Pine Care Center employees and residents, um, and then it might open up to others. When they, my understanding is, was they say prison or prisoners. In my opinion, they would be down on the list. The prison guards, however, would be higher on the list, right up there at the sheriff's office and the EMTs, because somebody's got to be left to guard the the prisoners themselves. So I would agree with your, your assessment that that is unfair and uncalled for. But I, I think what's, what's, what's important... I'm sorry to interrupt, but people on Zoom are having trouble hearing you, Council. Oh, me. Sorry. Thank you. You're perfect. Um, <laughs> well, I think what's important to recognize is that you're not making these determinations as Correct. to who is getting... And no one in the county is doing that. Correct. Those are all federally mandated. Correct. Federally mandated and then state mandated as well. 
This is in a column that quoted Governor Sussman in the Los Angeles paper the day before yesterday. Right. The, the hard part. And that, that to me doesn't qualify as far as I'm concerned. Right. There, there's many citizens in our community and the city of Ely who I would put well above prisoners if that was my choice. I hope so. So if I have any input, I'm happy to do that, sir. Thank you. Any other questions for the county health officer or on his report? Uh, we appreciate you coming down for the work that you and your office have been doing. I appreciate it. I appreciate your support. Again, um, if you have local businesses that need help or you have questions, I'm a phone call away. I am willing to bend over backwards and frontwards and leftwards, wherever I need to go to try to help our citizens and to try to do what's best for our, our city, at least in my opinion, uh, at least in our county, uh, and try to keep us all safe and healthy and still having some fun while we do that. So thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with that, we'll move on to item three, Councilman Allworth, White John County Tourism and Recreation Director Kyle Horvath, discussion only, presentation on Broadman Park, community survey results. Hello everyone, uh, for the record, Kyle Horvath, Director of Tourism. Um, Jennifer, what was in their packets for... The graphs. The, yes. the, the graphs didn't also have the additional answers? No, because she told me they were preparing Just the okay. Okay. Well then what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to keep this one. I've got six copies, five copies. Okay. Um, if, if, I, if you don't mind. Not at all. And that way when I go through it, they can go through it as well. And of course, um, we have copies of these at the convention center, and I can email these to anybody who's interested in this particular packet right here. Um, <clears throat> so I want to thank the council, and uh, particularly Jim, for working with me on this one. Uh, I think doing a community survey at, at this time is really relevant. Um, downtown is, is picking up some momentum. You've got you know, groups of citizens that are organizing and trying to further um, trying to further the activity in the downtown. So we came up with this survey um, not, not knowing that they were about to open up the next round of SNP and the grants. So uh, knowing that that's going to open up in September, this is really, really relevant, that we've done the community outreach to see what they want. Um, and I think what precipitated this was is you had two groups, uh, one, one private citizen, the other one was the Main Street Association, who was moving forward with what their ideas were for Broadband Park. Um, but for the sake of community buy-in and, and really knowing that we're on the right track for what's best for the community, this survey was necessary. So I'm just going to kind of go through their, their front and back um, copies here. And the first couple of questions are just to kind of get an idea of where people's heads are at. Uh, the first one is how often do you utilize Broadbent Park? The number one answer was a few times a year. And then the second answer was a few times a month. Um, Often and never were the two least answered ones. The second question is how important are parks to a community? Just to kind of assess to see where our citizens are in relation to how much they, they appreciate the parks that are here. And it overwhelmingly was answered as important and very important. So I think that's a good sign for us to move forward. The next one, it kind of complements that question, um, but is it kind of an interesting response is even though you feel like parks are extremely important to the community, how often is Broadbent Park utilized by the community? And somewhat on the lower end was what the answer was. So I think, I think that's no shock to anybody that uh, a park as great as Broadbent has been underutilized and we're trying to figure out a way to, to get more people down there. So the next question is we kind of dove into uh, the level of importance that people have on, on certain specific things. So the first one is sports facilities and ball fields at Broadbent Park. And uh, you can see the three answers right there. Um, indifferent, important, and very important uh, were, were answers to that. That, of course, is no surprise. But if you compare the answers to the next question, how important is it to have concert and performance facilities at Broadbent Park, you can see that the number of people answering indifferent went down, while the number of important and very important went up in comparison to ball fields. Question six, how important is it to have a playground at Broadbent Park? Important to very important, I think that speaks to our families looking for things to do with their kids um, within the downtown. 
Question seven is how important is it to have picnic and barbecue facilities at Broadbent Park? Again, important and very important. The big question, the one that everybody has, uh, has an opinion about is how important is it to have a splash pad or water